Do you want to use the best weapons for the best situations? Maybe you want to learn more about which weapons are viable. Want to have a bigger impact in your ranked games? Well, today I want to quickly dive into my personal opinion on the current state of the guns in Valorant. I want you guys to come out of this video with a better understanding about how these guns function in the meta and what type of value you can expect when purchasing them. From my experience, learning why these certain weapons are more viable than others can help you become a more knowledgeable and better player in the long run. Hi, my name is Dan, and today I'll be your own personal guide on these techniques. No matter what happens in Valorant, having the right weaponry for the optimal situations will allow you to have a much bigger impact in your games. I believe the ability to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each weapon can better prepare you as a player. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure to comment down below which setting you found most interesting or useful. Also, if you feel like we missed anything, comment what weapon you think is out of place. Before we dive straight in, as always, we have our question of the day. How do you guys feel about the breach changes? Personally, I feel that Breach is finally a very viable agent. It's obvious that the changes to his kit are aimed to better deal with operators, and now his tremor and ultimate can stop players with the operator from rescoping while stunned. I believe he may be a little overtuned, but time will tell. I love how Riot is trying to change agents to help shape the meta rather than nerf weapons to the ground. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the changes. How do you feel about Breach now? The S tier for this list will be comprised of the very best slot in weapons. These are the guns that you should find yourself buying the most when you're presented with the opportunity. Starting off, let's tackle the infamous Operator. Although it was widely considered a mediocre weapon with the initial release of Valorant Beta, players' newer understanding of this weapon has changed the game quite drastically. Comparing the Operator to the AWP from Counter-Strike makes the Operator seem extremely weak at first, but because of the different game design in Valorant, it makes the Operator actually stronger and easier to use in this game. For example, in Counter-Strike, during a full buy, each player will usually have two flashes, one smoke, and a grenade. That means each team has 10 flashes, five smokes, and five grenades. Although the AWP in Counter-Strike has a bigger mag capacity, faster zoom in time, and can be quick swapped easier, the extra utility that each player has can better deal with the AWP. On the other hand, because Valorant utility is unique to the characters, you'll usually only have two or three smokes and two to four flashes. On top of that, there are characters in the game that can hold angles with the Operator that are normally unsafe. Agents like Jet are a core reason the Operator is so strong in the current meta. Her ability to become nearly untradeable with her dash and the updraft allowing her to use the Operator in a vertical sense allows for potential possibilities that Counter-Strike players don't have to think about. So teams even opt to run two to three operators on the defensive side to heavily control lanes with ease. Because the defensive side can hold the lane angles before the offensive side can even peek them, it creates a lot of pressure on the attackers. They either need to risk dry peeking into an operator or use enough utility to flush the operator out. Especially in ranked, many players won't properly use their utility. So if you're using the operator correctly and moving it around accordingly, you can hold the game firmly in your grasp. I think the debate for Phantom vs Vandal is pretty straightforward. Although the Vandal did receive some much needed buffs, the clear winner is still the Phantom for the most part. It's fairly simple, the Phantom has a suppressor which not only reduces the sound drastically, but also allows you to spray through smokes without the enemy seeing your bullet tracers. Additionally, the Phantom has an easier spray control and fires at 11 RPS, which still overtops the Vandal by quite a bit. Lastly, the 30 round magazine is no joke. It may seem like the extra 5 bullets is not a big deal, but in a tactical shooter where all you may need is an extra bullet, 5 is ridiculous. If you're choosing your fights right, you'll rarely run into the problems of not having that one shot potential the Vandal offers at all distances. On top of that, if you do headshot someone outside of the one shot range potential with the Phantom, the aim punch is so drastic in this game that it pretty much spells disaster for your opponent. I think until they nerf or remove the aim punch, it will be difficult to recommend the Vandal over the Phantom. At a higher rate of fire, no tracers, and higher magazine, it's really hard to argue that it's the better rifle of the two. So if you're not using the Phantom already, start incorporating it into your games. The Odin is probably the most ridiculous weapon that I wish wasn't so strong. I think the game will run into some serious problems in the future once more players catch on to how strong this weapon really is. If you want to know a simple answer to why the Odin is so strong, watch Sinatra play. He's one of the first players I watched start to utilize the Odin to its full potential. To cut it short, its insane rate of fire, while ADS, will allow you to shred any player regardless of their weaponry. 
Coupled with its high ammo capacity and high bullet penetration, you can hold down crucial choke points in this game without even peeking your body. Also, the amount of straight duels I've won with this weapon is ridiculous. It will easily beat out the Phantom and Vandal if they don't hit that initial headshot, and with its insane rate of fire, multiple enemies will melt to the Odin before they have a chance to react. The best way to learn this weapon is to head over to ProGuides.com. We have some amazing coaches who would love to help you better understand and use the Odin. It has some insane potential, especially on maps like Haven and Ascent. If you guys are super interested in the Odin, feel free to comment below if you want us to make a full guide on it or any weapon covered in today's video. I can assume that all of you have had the pleasure of meeting an unfortunate end to the Judge. Although it may seem like a gimmick to most, I think even with its nerfs, the Judge is not only a monster weapon, but a very cost-efficient one too. If used properly, it can easily outduel any of the most expensive weapons in the right environment. Look to utilize the Judge in areas of the map that have tighter quarters. If you purchase the Judge after the pistol round wins, you can easily bonus the weapon and utilize it against full buys. Because it's so potent at close range, most opponents will not actively try to contest the area they assume you may be playing. In a sense, the Judge has the same holding potential as the Operator at a far cheaper price. It's great at holding crucial choke points that are very closed off, while the Operator is great at holding those longer angles. Either way, the Judge is a ridiculously strong weapon, and nothing in its price range can make players so scared to contest you. Previously, I would have put the Vandal in B tier, as I saw very little reason to run it over the Phantom. Now, with its rate of fire increase, it's much better at taking straight duels with Phantom users and now has an even better time to kill at those medium to long ranges. I think it's really shaping itself into a great attacker side rifle, especially on maps like Ascent and Bind. Both of these maps have a lot of longer angles that really play into the Vandal's strength. Again, I still think the Phantom is the better rifle overall. However, I can't deny that the Vandal is in a much better state than before and has some real potential on the attacker side. To get the most out of this weapon, make sure to not rely on spraying this weapon as it's harder and defeats the purpose of the gun. Try and utilize tap and burst shots and medium range outside of the 15 meter one shot distance when possible. The Ghost is easily one of my most used weapons of all time. Not only is it usually the superior weapon on pistol rounds, it's also a great weapon to save when you do win the initial pistol round. Its immense 15 round magazine, higher rate of fire, and extremely low cost allows you to even win straight duels against full buys. I often recommend purchasing a Ghost and Light Shields over the Sheriff for eco rounds. The Ghost is such a great weapon, and at 500 credits, it's very hard to beat. Okay, let's talk about the Stinger. I think this weapon is the most underrated weapon in the current meta. Although the Spectre is a better weapon in most scenarios, the Stinger is a great alternative, especially if you're going to purchase something like a Sheriff or a Buck. At a thousand credit cost, you can purchase Light Shields for 400 credits, which still puts it under the cost of running No Shield Spectre. On top of that, I've found way more success with the Stinger over the likes of a Sheriff against full weaponry purchases. The amount of times I've been able to come out on top in a duel against a Phantom slash Vandal with the Stinger is absurd. This is because of its insanely high fire rate. Multiple shots to the head will pretty much make it impossible for them to hit accurate shots back due to the flinch mechanic in the game. One downfall for the weapon is its 20 round magazine. It makes it nearly impossible to get more than two kills with one clip. But if you find that one versus one duel and come out on top, now you've netted yourself a free weapon upgrade. So start purchasing this weapon when you're thinking about coughing up 1600 for the Spectre on eco rounds. You'll be surprised how strong it is in the right scenario. For a thousand credit weapon, I think you can go head to head against all weapons in close range scenarios. That being said, the Sheriff is still a great eco weapon to purchase due to its one shot ability. However, try out the Stinger more often and see if it works for you as well. I think it's a highly underrated weapon and it can net you kills that you don't even expect are possible. The classic pistol doesn't cost you a dime. At zero credits, there is no other weapon that can compete at this price range. It may seem high to put it up at A tier, but it's a triple burst potential that makes it a viable secondary even though it's completely free. If you feel like the classic is working for you, try to start implementing the right click burst more often. Aiming at the neck will increase its viability and jumping right clicks are a great mix up when you're in a sticky situation. For 200 credits, the shorty is a tough bargain. With his most recent nerf, it's actually much more balanced than it used to be. Previously, I would have put this weapon on S tier, as there's nothing at this price range that can get surprise kills the way it used to. It's still extremely strong for 200 credits, and although the range and headshot damage has been nerfed, at close range, it still will kill easily. If you don't have a lot of money to spend and want to play a cheesy close quarters weapon on eco rounds, the shorty is your best bet. To close off the A tier, I have to show some love to the tried and true Spectre. At 1600 credits, I'd argue it's more often than not a great purchase over the likes of the Bulldog and the Ares. It's pretty much a phantom with much less range and damage. 
This weapon is the standard weapon to purchase after the pistol round wins and for half buys when money is tight for your team. Again, I recommend the Stinger Light Shield over the Spectre No Shield any day of the week when you're looking to eco buy. However, I can't deny it's a solid weapon and if it was a little bit cheaper, then it would probably be an S tier weapon. B is for Bulldog, it's pretty straightforward. The Bulldog is a weapon just like the Spectre, but with increased range and a lower mag capacity. You can kind of compare it to a mini Vandal. My main issue that's stopping this weapon from being A tier like the Spectre is its increased credit range at 2100 and its slower fire rate. Although it can contend against the better rifles at range, it struggles at the closer range, which is a big deal breaker for me. More often than not, I feel like the Spectre is a better weapon on most maps and especially on the defender side. I know it seems like I've been giving the Sheriff a rough time, however, it's still a great weapon in the right hands. At 800 credits, it offers the potential to one-shot full shield to targets at close or medium distance. Its strength is landing those first-shot headshots, so accuracy and precision is key here. I see far too many players swinging with this weapon and trying to body shot their opponents to death. The Ghost is far better at this job and is an easier, more cost-efficient weapon. So if you want to get the most out of this weapon, make sure your crosshair is placed at head level and ready for other players swinging into your line of sight. To put it simply, the Sheriff is like a sniper pistol, so look to hold down more angles and stop swinging and spamming like it's the Wild West. The Marshal is the king of killing enemies with no shield. There is no other gun that can utterly outrange your opponents, especially after a pistol round win. The main issue here is that the Marshal isn't too great against full buy rifles unless you land a precise headshot. However, it's a fairly fast fire rate and can do a lot of damage. This weapon is great for operator players as you'll usually have enough money on round four to buy an operator. Again, great at farming players with its one shot body shot and fast fire rate for a sniper. Has some trouble against shield opponents, so pay attention to that. A lot of people may be surprised by the buck being in the C tier. At 900 credits, it's another amazing purchase considering how much value you can potentially gain from this weapon. A precise right click to the head can kill enemies at a surprising range even with full shields. Not to mention, it's still a shotgun, so the left click at close range is extremely potent as well. However, the downfall is that because this is a pump activated shotgun, precision is really key here. Missing a shot with the buck is not nearly as forgiving as the judge, so you need to make each shot lethal. A faster fire rate could easily put this weapon in the A or B tier, but I hope Riot doesn't do that to be quite honest. The last weapon in the C tier has to be the Ares for me. The budget version of the Odin is a great alternative, however it lacks the lethality to its similarly priced weapons such as the Spectre, Bulldog, and Judge. Although it doesn't exceed particularly at any range, its high magazine and bullet penetration are a great alternative if you're playing agents like Sova that can better utilize this weapon. Overall, it's not terrible, but if you're not utilizing the high bullet penetration, look to purchase the other weapons in its price range. This tier is dedicated to the weapons that try to find a place in our hearts, but unfortunately can't shine bright like they want to. I want to preface the F tier by saying I believe no weapon in Valorant is truly awful. However, this tier is dedicated to the guns that really have no strong spot in the current meta. They either lack the potency that others do, or there are better alternatives to weapons in question. I think the most obvious F tier of them all is the Guardian. On paper, it's not a terrible weapon. High bullet penetration and one-shot headshot potential at all ranges make it seem very appealing. However, at 2500, it's hard to justify such a specialized weapon because it's a low fire rate, single shot only weapon. Its effective engagement rate is usually medium to long range. And this is where the Phantom, Vandal, and Operator all shine. To me, the Guardian feels like an even less forgiving Vandal as if you miss that initial headshot, you're in a very tough spot. With its low fire rate and low magazine, trying to penetrate through walls can even put you in tough positions and out of ammo. Overall, at its price range of 2500 it's too expensive and too situational to use effectively. I think it's better off to buy a Vandal with half armor if your money is tight. I hate to say it, but the Frenzy is a pretty useless weapon. Its low magazine size, low DMG, and high recoil make it difficult to use and hard to justify. At the same price point, the Ghost hits harder, has a bigger magazine, and is an easier weapon to use. The only situation I find the Frenzy better in are super tight angles where you can possibly net one or two kills before you die. Additionally, it's great on agents like Phoenix who can afford two flashes if they opt for the Frenzy over the Ghost. But again, there are better and easier options out there. I think the Frenzy would need a pretty significant recoil buffer to be a viable option over the Ghost or Classic. 
I hope you guys enjoyed our newest gun tier list for patch 1.07. There were still some pretty significant changes to this patch, and I'm glad that some weapons have gotten more love and others have been tweaked a little bit. Overall, Valorant is in a great state and it's a ton of fun to play. Here at Pro Guides, we wanted to cover some of the things you may be missing in your weaponry pool, and hopefully it will open your eyes to try some new guns. If there are any tips that you feel helped, be sure to comment and tell us why. Additionally, if there's anything we missed, let us know. We love to learn more too. That's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. To keep up to date with us, make sure you hit the bell notification, which ensures that you stay up to date with all of our videos and ahead of the competition. And if you want to learn more about anything Valorant related, head over to ProGuides.com for the best Valorant on-demand coaching. Our coaches are among the very best, and we hope you check them out if you enjoyed this video. They will help you with any of your individual Valorant needs and can bring you to the next level. And if that's not your play style, make sure to check out our Discord. We have a great community where you can chat, hang out, and possibly find friends to play with. Stay tuned for our future videos and keep up the grind, ProGuides fam.